Hi, my name is Matteo Pedercini, and with my colleagues at the Millennium Institute, we develop simulation tools to help decision makers design effective strategies for sustainable development. Starting January 2016, the world will embark in a new and ambitious journey towards ending poverty in all its dimensions while caring for the environment. This is the United Nations Agenda 2030. Governments will be facing tough challenges in their planning. How to turn the aspirations embedded in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals into an effective national development plan? Such goals are tightly interrelated and meeting them requires integrated strategies that cover all the 17 dimensions in a unifying and harmonic way. Policymakers will have to address, among others, questions such as how to coordinate and harmonize investment across different areas, how to leverage on the positive synergies among interventions and limit undesired effects, how much resources are needed to achieve the SDGs and how to finance such investment. We have developed the Integrated Model for SDG Analysis ISDG, to support decision makers addressing such questions. The ISDG model is based on the T21 technology and is easy to use. Let us look at a simple example for an Eastern Africa low-income country. On the model dashboard, we can have a quick look at SDG performance for all the 17 goals. The red bar below each goal indicates the expected performance on that goal by 2030, in case no change in policy or external shocks are introduced. This is what we call the business as usual scenario. Looking at the dashboard, we can rapidly identify areas in which the country is expected to progress faster and areas where progress is slower. As we click on any of the goals, we open a page where we can define policy interventions that are directly related to the goal. For instance, in the case of goal 1, we can define the amount and beneficiaries of poverty reduction transfers. This does not imply that such transfers would be an effective policy to fight poverty. For instance, investment in education or agriculture training might be more effective in the long run. But they are located under Goal 1 because they directly affect the relevant indicators. But let us pick as an example another area of policy intervention. Goal 9 is one where progress is expected to be quite slow by 2030. So let us try to do something about it. In this window, we have the possibility to set investment for different types of infrastructure. Let us choose to invest in the paved roads network, which is often underdeveloped in low-income countries. By the use of this simple table, we can set the investment on paved roads over time as percentage of GDP. Let us test a large investment, such as the equivalent of 1.5% of GDP throughout the SDG period. We can also modify the unit cost of road construction, which can vary over time. For instance, road construction might be especially low at the beginning of the intervention and to grow gradually to a higher level by 2030. Let us now go back and try to figure out where the resources to support such investment can come from. By clicking on goal 17, we access a summary budget of our interventions that currently indicates that if we do not achieve further revenue, the entire investment will be financed by borrowing on financial markets. Depending on the health of public finances, this might or might not be a good idea. In order to reduce the burden on public finances, we can assume that the investment will be partly financed by the private sector, as in a PPP, or that some donor will provide project grants, or that taxes will be increased to cover the additional expenditure. Or a combination of the three things. To keep things simple, let us just assume that the donor will provide the necessary funding and set the relevant table at a corresponding level. We are now ready to simulate and by clicking on the Run button, the model performs the simulation in a couple of seconds on a regular laptop. 
Once the simulation is complete, we land back to our dashboard. Although now, below each of the goals icon, we have two colored bars. The red bar representing the progress in the business as usual scenario, as before, and the blue bar representing progress in our simulation. We can immediately see that, as one can expect, progress on goal 9 has been faster in our new simulation. But we can also see that progress on other goals has also improved. For instance, we have better performance on things such as poverty, hunger, health, economic growth and others. On the other hand, progress has slowed down for a few indicators, such as sustainable cities and communities. This is because as we simulate a single intervention in one area, its effect spreads to all the other areas. But let us have a closer look. By clicking on goal 9 again, now we access a causal map that shows how the direct impact of the intervention propagates across the system. The intervention has led, as expected, to the construction of additional paved roads, which reach by 2030 a value of over 100,000 km versus the roughly 30,000 km that we had in the business as usual scenario, a major increase. The better road network leads to an increase in productivity because access to resources and markets is fundamental for firms' productivity. This in turn leads to faster GDP growth and a faster reduction in poverty, about half percentage point lower by 2030 in our new simulation. A good road transportation network is also fundamental for access to basic social services, such as education and health, and the positive impact of our intervention is also reflected in indicators such as the average years of schooling and access to basic health care. On the other hand, the faster development of paved roads contributes to the further reinforcement of road transportation as the main transportation mode. This leads to a larger number of motor vehicles, here we see four lines representing private cars and commercial vehicles, and thus a larger amount of CO2 emissions. In addition, emissions of fine particulate from combustion engines increases, which coupled with the ongoing urbanization process leads to a larger number of people exposed to such polluting agents, with a negative effect on life expectancy. As a result, life expectancy improves only mildly in our scenario, because the positive effect of better access to healthcare is compensated by the negative effect of higher exposure to fine particulate. We have simulated just one intervention and yet the complexity of the system has led to some interesting results. Even more interesting is the analysis of multiple interventions at the same time. The model can handle a large number of them. For instance, what interventions could we introduce to mitigate the negative effects of our road building investment? And how could we couple it with investment in social services to profit the most of the better mobility? But we can leave such questions for another time. The ISDG model is a broad and integrated tool to support the design and assessment of effective strategies to achieve the SDGs. It has a low resolution compared to sector-specific models and is not to be intended as a substitute for those, but as a tool to support policy makers in establishing policy coherence and building an integrated view on development strategies.